Hello, and welcome back to Ticker Symbol Live, where we try to understand ARK Invest's vision of the future and their investment thesis in it by what they're investing in today. Or actually, I guess yesterday, since they often post their information after market close. So today, I'd like to talk about a company called C Limited. Uh, I looked this thing up, and uh, I spent a lot of time scratching my head trying to figure out how to talk about this company. A, it makes me very excited, but B, it's very diverse in what it does. Uh, let's go to the data. I'll show you why I picked C Limited, and then we can dive right into their really cool, interesting, and diverse investor presentation, as well as some of the products, services that they offer across many different market sectors, ranging from gaming to fintech to e-commerce. So let's start with the Arc Reactor. Uh, I have things ordered in terms of ARK rank, so ARK invests biggest positions first. So Tesla is on top, and as you can see, the whole table is pretty fairly gray, so not many interesting moves in the top 20 positions. But as we go all the way down and down to C, C Limited, they made an outsized buy yesterday. It's an over $700 million position for ARK Invest. It's their 16th biggest position overall, so one of the biggest positions that is often missed because it is not in the top 10 of any particular fund, but when you combine all their holdings in it together, it's actually a very meaningful amount. C Limited sits uh, in ARK K. It's the 21th, 21st biggest position. I'm still drinking my coffee. 21st biggest position in ARK K with $375 million in it. It's the 11th biggest position in ARK W with $160 million in it. And it's the fifth biggest position in ARK F with almost $180 million in it. So ARK W is a very big fund as well. And as you can see, just outside the top 10. So unless you actually click inside the PDF's holdings, you will just miss the fact that SE, C Limited, ticker symbol SE, sits at the top, near the top of this fund. Um, so what the heck is this thing, right? Let's take a look at some of SE, C Limited's uh, investor materials. Share my screen here. So C Limited kind of has three arms. Digital entertainment focused on video game publishing, digital financial services, and then e-commerce. And it owns three separate online platforms and has strong partnerships in each. And I think it does a lot of cross promotions between these platforms where applicable. So this network effect is more than the sum of its parts. So it's a digitally native internet everything type of company. Almost think like a miniature Google, right? Or a, you know, miniature Tencent of its own, you know? So if we scroll down, we can see they have a timeline. By the way, I'm in their 2018 investor presentation. This is one of the last ones I've been able to find that really focus on what this company is as opposed to just changes in financials. We'll talk about changes in financials as well. So let me know what kind of questions you have, and I can flip between several different presentations and several things that I've looked up in preparation for today's live stream. So, uh, some some of their high level insights, right? They target Southeast Asia and Taiwan, and they have an enormous growth opportunity there. And we'll, we'll see that they're number one already in a few things there. They have a huge home court advantage because they have global experience alongside a deep local knowledge. That is the Southeast Asian markets where they do a lot of great localization for other services. For example, League of Legends, which is a huge game, and they are the publisher for the Southeast Asia markets for that game. They're the number one in digital entertainment and e-commerce in that region, and they have robust long-term business performance and financials. So this is the actual part of the world that we're looking at. Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Vietnam, Taiwan, and the Philippines. So Southeast Asia. This is in the Pacific, uh, if you don't know where in the world you're looking at. Uh, and the two big markets that are expanding for SE Limited simultaneously, I, I'm going to make this mistake a lot, by the way. The name of the company is C Limited, S-E-A, but their ticker symbol is S-E. So those two things are interchangeable. Uh, the online gaming market size for them is expanding at a 20% compound annual growth rate, right? So they're talking about PC gaming and mobile gaming. 
as well as the e-commerce growth rate, and we'll show, we'll talk a little bit about their e-commerce platform as well, is expanding at a 27% compound annual growth rate. This, of course, uh, spurred, both of these, of course, are spurned on in part by the coronavirus and the pandemic, but I don't expect these growth rates to slow down at all. As more and more people adopt online games, mobile games, mobile payments, mobile shopping, uh, SE is in all of those markets and primed for growth, uh, especially in the Southeast Asian markets. This is a good time to ask the question of the day. Tell me what you think. Do you invest in overseas markets? Does a company's location matter to you? For example, a company focused on Southeast Asia or EU or another location? Uh, do you invest in US only companies? I'd love to know what you think about companies that target specific locations very aggressively and try to win those over, right? We've talked about Pinduo Duo in the past. We're talking about SEC Limited today. And ARK Invest owns a lot of these companies that are hyper targeting specific markets, not just entering the global market overall. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So here's how they break down their home court advantage. Right, so Garena is their online gaming publishing house. Shopee is their e-commerce platform, and AirPay is their fintech mobile wallet uh, platform. Right, so online payments, online shopping, and online gaming. And so, how they see their core pillars are: they have strong local market knowledge, great local partners, and a great local team where they can connect to global companies and local help them localize for the Southeast Asia region. So everything from understanding gamer, game player behavior and preferences to localizing content and hosting local esports events, shopper tastes and preferences, customized product layout and category management, local use cases for fintech, custom mobile interfaces specifically for that area, right? So what they're doing is they're taking a big global service and localizing it to help hyper target this. And this is a theme we're going to see over and over in fintech. It's a theme we're going to see over and over in gaming and something we're going to see over and over in e-commerce is the fact that the best way to convert the most people is to personalize content to each cohort of people. So this is especially true across cultural gaps. So when you're focused on a Southeast Asian market versus a European market versus an American market versus a Latin American market, you don't want to create one generic brand. You want to custom tailor your brand to those different markets so that you can ramp up the conversions and ramp up the revenue and ramp up the engagement of your brand in each one of those areas individually. So that's one of the big things that C Limited is helping other businesses. Riot Games, Tencent, we'll show you, I'll show you more of those partners in a moment, but this is one of the core services they offer business to business. Seeing a lot of comments. I have a stake in SE, but I'm afraid of the future growth. What do you know about future business and competition? We'll get there. And then uh, SE in ARC F, it's also in ARC W, and it's in ARC K. It is a big ARC invest position. So let's keep talking about it. So deep relationships with Tencent. Tencent, another one of ARC Invest's biggest positions. Tencent owns 5% of Tesla, Tencent owns Riot Games, which means Tencent owns League of Legends. Tencent is a massive company, right? So Tencent has invested in C-Limited every round. It has preferential access to their content portfolio. Uh, it's the number one PC game. I'm not so sure if this is still true, but League of Legends is a massive franchise, absolutely massive. And then Arena of Valor is another game that Tencent makes that C publishes in their region. And then they have a strong relationship and board presence and they co-develop uh, games and other opportunities, right? And what C Limited provides is that local market knowledge, local leadership, execution, right? In the local region, local payments and distribution. So all of the stuff that requires serving that Southeast Asian market for Tencent. So, Let's talk about their three core products, right? Garena, Payee, and AirPay, right? That's their online gaming, online e-commerce, and online fintech platforms. Uh, I'm going to, so all three of these platforms are leading winners in the Southeast Asian uh, area. You're going to see this chart three different times, and it's all going to say the same thing. It's going to say, hey, we're the best in the area because we know how to take 
big businesses and help them scale locally, right? Those are the core services we just saw they provide for Tencent. So I'm going to skip all these in favor of the more interesting platform specific content, just because that tends to be what I as an investor think about when I'm trying to make an investment decision. How is this company different from its competition, which is that question I highlighted moments ago from the chat. So strong development partners, Tencent, Riot Games, EA, and Seasoft. So all of these are big game publishers in the United States or in Korea, right? And Seasoft makes a game called Lost Ark, which I'm very interested in. EA makes countless games, including sports games. Riot Games, again, makes um, League of Legends. And they came out with a couple other new games that are very interesting. And Tencent, of course, uh, multi-multi-media conglomerate all over uh, the world, right? Including, again, owning 5% of Tesla. So exclusive publishing rights, right, in the Southeast Asian markets. And then what they get in return is they get to retain a large chunk of the gross billings, right? And so we're seeing that, again, what Garena, the local Southeast Asian publishing house for video games under C Limited, that's Garena, a uh, massive captive user base. So lots of people subscribe to that video game publisher, Integrated payment, pro integrated payment processing, and that again comes from the fact that C Limited's other two services also focus on payment processing. So just to be clear, this is an example of C Limited building something out once and using it in three different ways. They have a strong localized payment gateway that they use to sell video games, enable e-commerce, and work with fintech, so vendors that need to accept transactions uh, online and off. Big payment gateway, one of the core capabilities of C Limited that's used in three very different market areas. Build once, use everywhere. Love it. Game curation and marketing. Again, knowing what your audience likes and marketing to them appropriately. Content localization and operational localization. And then offline and online esports streaming and events, right? And of course, all of the data that comes with that. And we're going to see this chart three times as well. Once for the video games, once for the e-commerce, and once for the fintech mobile wallet payment app. Great. So here are just some of the games that they focus on. Vehicle, Death Race, you know, Maxim, Eat and Heal Faster, right? So like these are different features in current games, you know, in Free Fire, which is the number one game in Southeast Asia by downloads and monthly active users. So what's, what's going on? They released Vehicle Death Race, they released a new character, and they released a new map, right? And these are the things that, you know, if you're not a gamer, who cares? What this means is they're pushing out new content to increase and retain local customers, increase engagement, increase revenue, increase conversion rate. So don't think of this as like, why are we talking about gaming? Think of it as, hey, this is content that keeps that audience captive so that they can retain and expand that market lead, right? So here's how Garena, the publishing house under the video game publishing house underneath C Limited, has been growing year over year, over a hundred percent increase. Uh, you know, quarterly paying users, so six million, seven million paying users. So that's a lot of gamers, right? These are not hugely pop densely populous regions. So this is these are big numbers for the area. Um, you know, th there are key urban areas, but you know, we're talking about millions of people millions of gamers every quarter engaging with Garena is what I'm trying to say. So, and then Garena does esports activities. So more games means more game players, means more attractive broadcasts, which means more viewers, which means more games. And we've seen this, we've seen this time and time again with things like Twitch TV, where a game becomes popular on Twitch, which causes more people to try it, which causes more people to start streaming it, which increases its popularity, which increases sales, and it's a virtuous cycle. And that's what's being shown on the screen here. So, and then they go into esports and online events and local events and localization of those online and local events. So now let's talk about Shopee, right? So Shopee is uh, C Limited's e-commerce platform. So now we're taking a step away from gaming. Same chart, gonna blow right through it. Lots and lots of good things to say about Shopee in the local area. And then here is what is going on with Shopee. Shopee enables anytime and anywhere shopping. 
e-commerce, it's convenient shopping and discovery across a wide amount of products and, of course, a wide amount of vendors. So think something like Amazon, think something like Google Marketplaces, and you have a basic idea of Shopee. I actually have Shopee open here, so what we can do is we can, like, pick on a region. I don't speak any of the languages supported in this region, so we're going to use Google Translate. Google Translate's not coming up, but that's okay. You can kind of see exactly what's going on here. Shop uh, search bar at the top, different categories you can select from. We can click on fashion, which I assume is fashion. And sure enough, you know, we're getting some fashion stuff. And then of course, however, they decide to spread that out according to different categories, things that are on sale, uh, you know, we can go right into sunglasses. You definitely get the idea of what Shopee is, right? So it can go back to Shopee Mall. And I'm, I'm basically on Southeast Asia's Amazon. So that's what Shopee is, right? Reliable and secure, seamless payment options. So again, building that robust payment gateway and now using it for e-commerce, integrated logistics solutions. And that just comes with being a local operator and understanding how to get stuff from point A to point B. Social commerce experiences, we talked about Pin Duo Duo in the past. So different ways of enabling cool, fun ways to shop, whether it's a family unit or volume bargains. We kind of have something like that in the US, by the way. You know, Costco, I think, uh, is a real sleeper. Uh, it's not that it does social commerce per se, but because Costco, you tend to buy in bulk, you're always thinking about the family unit or, you know, supplying for a party or some other event. I think Costco should really lean into that social commerce play. So if, if anyone knows somebody from Costco and wants to just like nudge them, be like, hey guys, you're primed and ready for these like volume based discounts and getting people in store and selling memberships, right? Costco is literally a membership uh, business. I think they could do really well in the social commerce world specifically. Anyway, uh, so C limited, C limited's payee does that, right? So that's the buyer side. And on the seller side, obviously, all the things that come with enabling e-commerce, easy to use interface, powerful seller tools, centralized standardized platforms on mobile and PC, right? All the things you would expect to see as a vendor trying to set up a shop on Shopee. So here's what the interface looks like on mobile. And I, I won't spend too much time on this because I think we all get it. But what I do want to point out is things like localized campaigns, you know, logistics integration and a social feed, right? So what's going on here is they're catering, they're dedicating screen space to these social features and to this localized content. Right. And this is something that you can really only do and understand how to do correctly with good AI and understanding of the local market. So this is a real differentiator for C Limited's Shopee, because to be able to do this, you need to have that knowledge. And so this is just going into, hey, how can we help you uh, migrate products from store to store, manage your shop online, sort of that business to business transaction stuff, right? So, and again, you know, the ability to parse, piece out the site that they're showing to users or to sto store owners and leverage the best of what they have, depending on what the AI says should be put in front of those people is a differentiator to me. Here's how they monetize. It's going to be all the standard ways you expect performance based advertising, commissions, value added services. Think, you know, whether it's online business consulting or just helping people migrate data, whatever. And then, of course, direct sales, they take a platform fee. Commissions, you know, and then all of the stuff that they do for handling the local logistics and services. And of course, we can see huge revenue growth in the e-commerce space. It's just blowing up 181% year over year growth. And then the gross market, the gross merchandise value, excuse me, you know, almost plus 200%, right? No brainer that e-commerce is going to blow up and stay blown up even after the pandemic ends. Things might level off a little bit, you know, growth might slow, but nobody is going to be like, well, I'm going to stop shopping online now that physical stores are open, right? And of course, economies of scale, right? So the number of gross orders has increased by a large margin and then sales as a percent of marketing, right? So excuse me, sales and marketing as a percentage of gross merchandise value. This is what you like to see. 
They're spending less to grow more is what this chart is saying. So they used to spend 7% on sales and marketing, and now they spend 6% to get way many more gross orders, right? So as they grow, less and less of their overall budget by percent is dedicated to marketing uh, and sales specifically, which is something you always care about. If a company has to spend a lot to grow, you need to ask yourself why. And then finally, we can talk about their fintech solution, right? So digital financial services, I realize I'm already at the 20 minute mark, so I appreciate you sticking with me. And again, they have another payment app, right? So what's going on here that I really like, and this is something that I want to call out specifically, Square does this as well. And this is a big differentiator for Square, ticker symbol SQ, one of ARK's biggest holdings overall, their biggest fintech holding, uh, and you know the their chief winner for the mobile payment space and the digital wallet space, we're about to see this feature again. So what the AirPay app does smartly, right? So here, here's all the basics, right? QR and barcode scanning, bill payment, movie tickets, you know, for example, insurance, e-vouchers, leisure, funds transfer, right? Don't pay attention to that. Pay attention to the fact that these categories can change. E-vouchers, leisure, movie tickets, those can be substituted for whatever else they think should be put in front of the user. That's screen space that's dedicated to advertising things they think you're going to click. Get it? On the right side, we can see e-tickets, donations, food delivery, mobile top-up, and then top-up services, direct top-up services for game credits and other third-party providers. So dedicated screen space for third-party partners that they think they should put in front of you because you're more likely to use that service. So what I really want to highlight is AI can control every part of the screen. I'm not saying it does. I'm saying it can, right? Uh, AI can control every part of the screen and decide what to put in front of you that you're more likely to buy as a user. Uh, but, 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 so I see a bunch of comments. Let me, let me just clarify something. So very exciting. Would really like to see info that's not three years old. Um, the company hasn't really changed much in the last three years. It's growing and doubling down on what's working, right? So when we look at their financials from this last quarter, let me just show you that it's going to be the exact same thing real quick, right? Info may be too old to be actionable. Like I, I spent a good amount of time preparing for this. So let me just show you real quick that it's not too old to be actionable. Here's their Q4 2020 earnings, and they still break things up in exactly the same way, right? Digital entertainment by Garena. That's the game publisher. You know, here's the same number one game we just talked about. Free Fire, still number one. That's the game that released all those maps. Here's Shopee, the e-commerce platform. That's what we're talking about now, right? They're still talking about the same kind of metrics, you know, how they're working on it, what platforms it's on, whatever. And then here's C Money, which is uh, which is the owner of um, Shopee Pay and AirPay, which are the two things we're talking about now as the fintech solution, right? So hopefully you get a good sense of uh, they still break their core business down into these three products. Uh, it's absolutely actionable, and there's nothing wrong with looking at their most recent investor analyst presentation just because it's a couple years old. So uh, don't worry about it. Anyway, so uh, what I want to point out here is that the screen is highly customizable, right? Um, and what you can do is put things in front of people that you think they're going to click. That's the big idea here. And then, of course, we can get into their financial highlights. But as you just saw from their three individual sectors, and this is where I should switch to the 2020 numbers, um, they, they're growing a lot in all three areas, right? And that's because they have, they're a digitally enabled business in the video game space, which is growing, in the e-commerce space, which is growing, and in the fintech space, which is growing. So... I kind of glossed over that here, but just just to like close out that section, you know, in terms of gaming, they manage some of the biggest games in the region. Free Fire is the number one downloaded game globally, which is crazy. It's the number one highest grossing game in Latin America and Southeast Asia, the regions that they cater to, and it's the highest grossing mobile game in India, right? Again, published by Garena. 
In e-commerce, they're seeing massive, massive growth quarter over quarter. This is quarter four, 2020. So this is literally the most up-to-date numbers now. Uh, and just showing you that they talk about the same things. Over 1 billion gross orders, which is really in- m- remarkable when you consider the population size of the area. $11.9 billion in gross merchandise value. So, and this, you can see that it's a huge, huge growth year over year, right? So still seeing the kind of growth that we saw here in all of their other sectors from three years ago, just just to respond to that call out in a way that's fair to the people asking, you can see that this year over year growth has been almost 200%, right? And then when you go here, you can still see it's past 100%. So still growth uh, in the triple digits year over year for equivalent quarters. So great call out from the audience, just showing you that there's nothing to worry about there. And then of course, you know, number one, number two, number three, and all these different categories that are very, very important to e-commerce. And then the same thing we'll see for financial services, right? Mobile wallets, frictionless value transfer, mobile payments, and so on, you know, are up over a hundred percent. So the last thing I want to do is just touch on a little bit more, give you a feel for what these services are, and then we'll wrap up with any questions about C-Limited in particular. So let's start with Garena. So Garena, of course, is their, let's see, did my, what's going on with my camera here? Here we go. So Garena focuses on esports, localization, and gaming. Uh, I'm not sure why this won't let me scroll down. Uh, They publish League of Legends in the area. So they're very connected to Tencent as well as Riot Games. Free Fire is that number one mobile game in the world right now in India and Southeast Asia in Latin America. Call of Duty, so another big brand name. This is made by EA and subsidiaries of EA. And Call of Duty is a wildly popular franchise. So C Limited publishes that through Garena in the local area. And of course, you know, it has a wide variety of platforms that has its own mobile app. Just, you know, think about Steam, think about blizzard activision and all the people with that sort of um gaming portal where you can do all sorts of upsells and cross sells and marketing and uh user retention and user uh gathering so garena has its own platform for pc and mobile in terms of shopee if we go back to shopee here let's take a look at this uh shopee e-commerce platform Launched in 2015, the leading e-commerce platform of Southeast Asia and Taiwan. So it's a shopping app that we talked about uh, extensively here. Here's what it looks like on PC. And of course, the app has a lot more intelligent interface. Excuse me. And then Shopee Pay and AirPay are rolled up into C-Money. C-Money is their uh, fintech service. So they do mobile wallets and they do offline payment services, right? So AirPay Counter and Mitra Shopee are ways that you can pay vendors in store. Think about Square's terminal. Think about, uh, I think Venmo has a terminal. I'm not sure. But think about all those hardware solutions like Clover, where it's like literally a tablet on a swivel and a card reader, and the vendor gets an app and a payment gateway, and the user just taps their credit card, and it's a one-stop solution. So I think that wraps up everything I want to say about this kind of everything company, everything from video game publishing to e-commerce to digital wallets, all of which have experienced huge year over year growth for, as we saw three years now, starting with their 2018 presentation. We're now in 2021 and they're still sustaining triple digit growth. It is one of ARK Invest's biggest positions. So we can end on the ARK reactor here where I share my app window and we take a look. C Limited is currently ARK Invest's 16th biggest position. It is a big position. They have over $700 million in it. They made a big purchase in it yesterday, increasing their position by 2%, which is meaningful when you remember that ARK Invest is an ETF manager, an active fund manager. Um, 16th biggest position overall. Southeast Asian company. So let me know in the comments if you have any last minute questions uh, and we can talk about them. I'll stay on for a couple more minutes. 
You expected our questions. Th- yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, sure. No problem. Uh, I'm here to try to provide really good research on one company every day. I realize that the whole brand ticker symbol you and ticker symbol live are still pretty new. So hopefully one day I earn your trust in the things I put in front of you. Never here to waste your time. Always here to talk about the vision of the future, the investment thesis in it, dig up the most relevant information I can fairly quickly, right? So some information may have old numbers on it, but when you compare it to new information, it should still line up. It'd be really surprising, for example, if C Limited had very different numbers or very different business units from 2018's earnings, which would happen in 2019 looking back until now, right? So, uh, Good call out. I'm glad we got it cleared up. And hopefully in the future, it's just, hey, this is probably what's most relevant to this company at this point. I appreciate it. Uh, Shopee also got a lot more opportunities in Indonesia. Yeah. And I love to see that, right? When a company lands and expands in terms of geographic area, that's really good. As you can imagine, one of the things that C Limited can scale by is being able to localize to more countries or localize better to each individual company country. So as it increases its foothold in a country and expands to neighboring countries, that's even more partnerships it can get from big companies like Tencent, Riot Games, EA, right? Everything, everyone that wants to localize, it's a big upward spiral. Would it be crazy to scheme about which video game company could expand into DeFi and e-commerce to achieve world domination? Epic Games would be in a good cultural position. Yeah, this is a good question. As as things lean t- more towards microtransactions, in-game advertising, in-game revenue models, I think we could definitely see the lines blur between, you know, logging into a game, earning money in a game, exchanging that money for outside money, you know, for US dollars, for example, spending that money in a payment portal, and you never left the ecosystem. Uh, One example would be like, let's say Square backed a publisher, a video game publisher and said, hey, when you earn money in this game, you're earning crypto in your Square wallet, your cash app wallet, right? That would be super funky and super cool. And it would definitely lead us down the road of ready player one where people put on VR headsets and they're like, well, I'm going to go, go to work. I'm slaying monsters and I'm going to cash my paycheck in real life to buy food. And that's that cycle, right? I, I bet there is a world in which that happens. What are some of the names you expect arc to add into the space ETF? Uh, I'll give you one, uh, RTX. I'm surprised Raytheon, which I think's ticker symbol is RTX. Uh, is not in this fund. Raytheon is a shoe in and a no brainer, and I'm not sure why it's not in the fund. Also, Rocket Labs, RKLB, I believe. Uh, I think it's VACQ right now, Vector Acquisitions, and it's going to be RKLB, Rocket Labs. Those are two companies I want to see in that fund. Uh, what was the uh, podcast? I was on a podcast for Brainchip. I was, I believe, their first external podcast guests. So they had five episodes so far. Episodes one through four featured sort of the brains behind brain chip and the people working on the chip behind brain chip. Uh, And the first two were kind of introducing the product. And number five, I was the first external audience member talking about artificial intelligence, beneficial AI, and um, uh, neuromorphic computing, which is AI based on the brain, like behaves like the brain instead of behaves like a neural network. Uh, and you can find that in the community tab of this channel, as well as ticker symbol U, the full podcast link. Uh, it's a Spotify link that will link you directly to the podcast. About 15 minutes. Check it out. Gaming is worldwide. Is there a good avenue to move their fintech and e-commerce beyond the localized model? I'm not sure. I think there's a lot of value in adding uh, to the localization space. So, for example, like we saw with. Uh, pin duo duo, there's a lot of value added when you can personalize content to the culture that you're trying to target. I think there's something to be said about developing a global solution and then working with partners to localize it. Personalization is super duper important uh, to increasing the conversion rate and thus the revenue of a global business. It's not enough to be a very vanilla blanket global solution. You really need to target uh, your customer bases, which they're all different, um, because you don't want to be seventh everywhere. You want to be first everywhere. And what first looks like definitely depends on what region you're talking about. U S EU, Asia, Australia, uh, you know, 
the Middle East, etc., all have very different tastes, preferences, shopping behaviors. Uh, you can't get away with developing one solution for them all. That never works. Of all the ARK investments other than Tesla, what do you like most? What strikes you? Teladoc. I, you know, Teladoc is still my number one uh, watched video on this channel. Teladoc is down like 40%. I'm sure it's up a little bit by now. I loaded up and forgot, like, I don't check it anymore because I'm in it for the long haul. But Teladoc is a no-brainer. It's ARK Invest's second biggest position overall. We can look at Teladoc real quick. If you take away ARK K, uh, they have almost just as much money in Teladoc in their play funds as they do in Tesla. It's an absolutely massive, massive uh, $2.5 billion position for ARK Invest. Teladoc all day. Uh, price prediction for SE Limited. We don't do price predictions on this channel. And I, I'll close on this note because it's super important. This channel is about understanding your vision of the future. It's, it's about me sharing my vision of the future. And then you take the parts that you like, and then you throw away the parts that you're like, that's dumb. I don't like that. And that's totally fair. What, what ARK Invest does that's special is they provide a lot of research and data that backs up their five-year vision of the future. And then they invest today based on that five-year vision, which is an incredible mechanism to say, hey, what should the five-year vision look like? And what are the market leaders in that vision today? Who's getting us there, right? So C-Limited clearly getting us there in a few different spaces in a specific part of the world which is why ARK Invest is investing in it because they're a virtual company enabling frictionless value transfer, uh, localized publishing of, of games and entertainment and e-commerce in the Southeast Asia region. And they're an outsized winner in a growing set of markets, the digital media markets, right? If you believe that and you look at the vision five year outwards, right, then you should be able to say, hey, this company is going to grow with these markets. And as it increases its foothold in each, then it doesn't matter what the price is today or what the price will be in the future. We could have another virus. We can have a black swan event. The markets could just stop trading. Price predictions are not, I, I don't think that's healthy investor behavior, right? So think about your vision of the future and go snipe companies that you think are undervalued today. I, people just rotated out of tech, right? So like, I've been buying bargain basement prices all of February. Like I've never spent more money in my life than I have this past February, maybe with the exception of last March. Right. So, uh, I encourage you to think about it that way. Not the, Hey, is this going to be 200 bucks or 220 bucks in, in two years? Right. Uh, by the way, that's not calling you out. I get that question over and over again. So I use that one to kind of say, Hey, you know, price predictions. Okay. I'm going to throw out a number. You're going to believe me or you're not. And it's like, then it doesn't come true. And you know, nobody notices that I made a bad price prediction anyway. And it's kind of like, you know, that's one of my least favorite things about YouTube finance is we all give price predictions. No one is ever right. And that's just the culture here. Right. So I'm trying to change that a little bit. Uh, cool. Uh, lots, lots and lots of positive and negative comments about what I just said. So, uh, I'll take it. You know, you're more than welcome to make your own price predictions. Tell me I'm dumb and say you need to start doing price predictions. I accept all that feedback. I might not always act on it, but I respect it nonetheless. So hopefully that gave you some deep insight into C Limited, which does a wide variety of stuff in the Southeast Asian markets. One of ARK Invest's biggest positions and why and its place in ARK Invest's vision of the future, according to me, who does not work at ARK Invest. This is Ticker Symbol Live. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you and your vision of the future. Thanks for watching.